Hello everyone. Are we all good? Right, I'm not going to lie, this is going to be not as long as it's my last one. It's going to be, as Gary said, short and sweet. Okay. And hard to beat. Yeah, a bit like me. Although, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so... First of all, thanks, Chris, for, for printing the sheet off. I know you're a bit of a scrap with the printer this morning for getting this off after my printer didn't work. So thanks for that. So it's called Don't Miss the Boat, but I'm just going to caveat by saying it's not going to be anything about the storm or anything about the fish or anything like that. I'm just going to caveat that. So if we move on uh, to what is my favourite scripture, which is Matthew 24, 35. It's only very short. But it says, Heaven and earth will pass away my words will never pass away now for me I love that scripture because what to me it says is there's an ultimate truth there's truth that's unwavering there's a truth that will never die even when anything else everything else goes God's word will never pass away it, it, there is an ultimate truth I'm just going to move on to uh, John 18 37 to 38 now this is during Jesus' trial and Pilate said, you are a king then. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king? In, the fact, the re in fact, the reason I was born and came to this world is to testify the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth, retorted Pilate. Now, it's a question that many have tried to contemplate over the millennia. And people have got themselves in knots. They've turned corners. They've twisted the truth and some believe actually truth is relative it's not truth is objective okay um the sun is either shining or it's not i'm either wearing underwear or i'm not okay <laughs> don't ask okay and for those of you who don't know relative just means basically that uh, things are interchangeable okay and, and it's not fixed basically and in today's world we hear the phrase Speak your truth. We hear that a lot, don't we? Speak your truth. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, what it actually means is state your point of view from what you feel. And we get that mixed up, or people get that mixed up with what actually is reality or a statement of reality. Okay? Again, the sun is shining or it's not. It can't be both at the same time. However, I do think it's still acceptable to hear someone's point of view, get it, understand it, but disagree and offer an explanation as to why they are wrong. If someone's blindfolded and they're about to walk into a manhole, you're going to say, oh, hold on, mate, don't take a step forward, you're going to fall down into a manhole, aren't you? Okay. And they might say, well, no, every step I've taken so far has been solid, it's been fine. And you go, okay, I understand that, I get that from your point of view, but trust me, the actual truth is you are going to fall down a manhole, okay? So in that regard, for example, if someone feels that they're, they're like genuinely there is a, a, a monster in the rafters, we could be like, okay, right, <laughs> I get how you're feeling, but this is the actual truth and we can actually explain the truth. Um, because at the end of the day, there either is a monster in the rafters or there's not. There is an ultimate truth. However, some we won't know in this lifetime. There's some things, there's some truths that God has, has not allowed us to know um, for whatever reason, and which, of course, arises debate. And, it's not, and that's fine and healthy as long as it's scriptural and we're searching for truth. I think too often, I think Christians come under, can come under this category. We are entrenched in our camp, mine versus yours, um, within, sorry, within the church. I'm on about debates now. Um, and it makes us feel better. But the, if the mission isn't to find ultimate truth, if you're not open to finding ultimate truth, then there's no point and it's just wasted energy. There is another trend at the moment where people are trying to push, push opinion as truth. If you are against abortion, you are aggressive, you are oppressive. Nope, that's just an opinion. If you voted for Brexit, you were dumb and didn't know what you were doing. Again, it's just an opinion. Why? Because sometimes there are a multi multitude of truths within the truth. I.e., there is a truth, that, sorry, i.e., the truth is that there is a collection of truths that may differ from one another but not contradict one another. 
But it still stands there is an ultimate truth. The ultimate truth is that there are a multitude of truths, not contradict one another. Okay? <clears throat> yeah. As a journalist, <laughs> my mission is to report truth and find truth. Okay, now some people, I know we have a bad rep, okay, usually, but generally we, can't, we, we cannot publish anything that's not true and not accurate, okay? I believe as humans, on a general level, we should be striving to seek the truth. Otherwise, what are we here for? What, you know, what, what's the point, okay? AI has come about, I'm sure we've all heard about this, and how, I mean, anyone who uses social media might have seen those videos where it'll get like different people singing songs when they haven't actually sung, sung a song, like SpongeBob or someone singing a song, or an actual other artist, they'll use that voice in another song and it sounds exactly like them, but they haven't sung it. There's a lot of misinformation going about online, just in general. And trust me, as a journalist, I, I, I can see what's not accurate and what's not, basically. But the, but the point is, we have to be careful what we consume. We have to be wary. But we also know there is an ultimate truth. Either that statement is true or it's not. Okay. So, if we move on to uh, the Aletheia slide, please, uh, Ryan. So this word, as you, well, you'll be able to see, but in Greek, aletheia means basically, it's the Greek word for truth or un unhidden reality, the state of not being hidden, the state of being evident. There is a truth, there is a reality, so much so that it'll be still, it will still be here when everything else goes. And that to me links back to the first scripture. Everything else in this life can go. Heaven, this, in this life, heaven and earth will eventually go. But the truth will stay the same regardless. And we need to cling to that. God is truth. He was here before the world was here. The world will be gone. A new one will be put in its place. But truth shall reign there too with the same truth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Words matter. They hold power especially when they speak truth. Now, I'm going to bang out a couple of scriptures here. I'm not expecting you to follow them in, the, in your Bible because there is a lot. But what I want you to do is listen to them. Well, be before, before I go into that, I just want to caveat by saying that when we pull scriptures from the Bible, we have to be very careful because we can pull them out and then somehow manage to create a certain point from it without the context, okay? So we need to be careful when we're doing this. I just want to reiterate that point. But what I'm going to do here, as hopefully you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see, is they all, if you can just about see that, they all link to one another. They're in chronological, chronological order as well. I'm going to repeat it twice, and then just so we get a good grasp of it. So follow it along on there. Proverbs 12, 18 to 19. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only for a moment. Proverbs 12, 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. Proverbs 15, 4. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Zechariah 8, 16. These are the things which you should do. Speak the truth to one another. Judge with truth and judgment for peace in your gates. John 8.32 And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 14.16 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the lie. No one comes through the Father except through me. We're going to read that again, but Ryan, if you put the other slide on, hopefully you can see here where, the, where they all interlink. So let's just quickly read that again with those up. Proverbs 12, 18 to 19. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue only lasts for a moment. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. These are things that you should do. 
Speak the truth to one another. Judge with truth and judgment for peace in your gates. John 8.32 And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And finally, John 14.16 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hopefully you can see as we go through there the sort of thread that was running through. Jesus is the truth. We should speak the truth. Truth brings life. Jesus is life. Okay. He is the ultimate truth. Jesus is the ultimate truth. He proved it by rising from the dead. Now, I don't want to go too much into apologetics here, but I'm just going to do a quick whistle-stop tour of a guide of evidence. I think sometimes people can say, oh, there's no outside the church. People can say... There's no evidence for God. There's no empirical evidence. Well, let me tell you. Okay. Ryan, if you, yeah, brilliant. There was an empty tomb. If the body was found, you could be sure the Romans would have put it on public display to, display to quell the uproar. Okay. The change in the disciples from being scared of confessing Jesus before to literally dying for them afterwards, for him afterwards. Okay. They believed they saw the reason Jesus. Paul. You know the story of Paul. Christian killer to Christian thriller. Okay. Perhaps there's more evidence close to home, though. I know a few weeks back, Gary, you got prayed for and your back was healed, for example. Nature. Nature points to truth. Nature points to reality. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. That's Psalm 19.1. And when I look at nature, I don't know about you, but I'm always astonished when I look at these programs. For example, the octopus or the chameleon, how it changes colours, how it knows how it knows to change colour, how it can blend in really well, just like that. Or the, another one was I saw uh, a giant moth and on the back it had, uh, it had a pattern of a cobra to ward off predators. Now, I'm sorry, but there's absolutely no chance at all that moth, through evolution, said, right, I'm going to put a cobra on my back. <laughs> And, and scare off these predators. There's just, no, there's just no way. So, look, the ultimate truth is either God designed it or he didn't. I think the evidence points to one way. And then just quickly, morality. Morals can't be relative. They can't be relative. Otherwise, no, I'm going to go slightly deep here. You can argue the Holocaust was not wrong because it was just Hitler's point of view when it was an abomination. Obviously, it was horrible. If morals are objective... Sorry, if morals aren't objective, then you can technically argue for, for that point of view, which is wrong. We all know it's wrong. So therefore, if morals are objective, if there, are, if there is a truth, then there has to be a moral lawgiver. And guess who that might be? Okay. I can list a load of things, a load of evidence, uh, as, as well but whether you believe God or not God is real and there is very real eternity it, we all in here believe God is real but whether people outside believe that or not there is a God that is real okay there are two places you can spend eternity but unfortunately people inside the capital C church want to dull that down hor horrifyingly but there is an ultimate truth, okay? And when we deviate from the truth, we neglect the sacrifice that God made from us, for us. God is such a gentleman that he will make you let that choice. Sorry, he will let you make that choice. But well, that doesn't mean whatever you pick will be the truth. The truth will stay the same regardless. The truth never deviates. We must make sure not to miss where the signs are pointing. There is an ultimate truth. And one day, everyone, believer or non-believer, will all find that out. Are you ready? Don't miss the boat. Ryan, if you put the... Oh, yeah, it's already up there. Aletheia, reality. Don't miss the boat. Stay in the boat of reality. It's in front of you today. So are we going to stay on that path as best as we can? And how do we do so? And I've said this before, and you've probably heard it off other 
preachers as well, people who've been up here, and I said it, I've definitely said it before. But these points are very important. Stay in the word and study it. Pray. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. Look for the truth. And you will find it. And once you have, make sure to keep hold of it. And remind yourself to step into it. Step into the boat. Stay in the boat. We in here today are ones that don't have to walk in uncertainty like the world. We don't speak our truth. We speak the truth. A truth that will stand for all time and beyond it too. Forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. What is truth? Pilate asked. It was right in front of him. Don't miss the boat. I told you it was short and sweet. So the truth will set you free. Jesus is a healer. Now, that is actually the end of my, my message. <laughs> it was very, very short. But hopefully you've, 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 uh, you, you've, brought, you've garnered something from it. We are going to have a final song and a prayer. Yeah, Jesus is a healer. If you want prayer for anything, if you want uh, healing, if you want uh, direction, Jesus is the truth and he will be able to set you free within that truth. So what we're going to do, we're going to whack on the final song. Uh, and if anyone wants to come forward for prayer, for whatever it is, please do so and we'll um, pray for you. Amen. Oh,